let's do a little Q&A. And off we go. Let me get rid of this banner. Boop. Comments. <laughs> Marty, teach the youth about Ave. It's not a bad idea, especially about DeFi and lending and margin calls and things like that. That's what kids probably need to know. Also, it's just some basic as far as like investing. I never, no one ever taught me that. My mom taught me, put it in a bank and save it. Work at a company for 50 years and retire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. I mean, he says, how about requiring a law degree for the folks who make our laws? They're true. Uh, any Voyager updates? Yeah, so there was one. And uh, let me bring it up. So if you don't know, Voyager is going through the auction process. It was I thought it was like Tuesday or Wednesday when they were supposed to finish that up. But there was more bids coming in. There was more people going. And you know how bidding works. If you get a, a, a final bid and people are like, you know, and more bids, no more bids. Okay, then you got to pick the best one or just reject all of them and go from there. Well, they didn't reject all of them and they just said there's more things coming in so we had to push it. So it went from Wednesday to Thursday to Friday and they're still pushing it forward. And there was an article about Binance. Well, first of all, people think that FTX is the um, one of the top bidders, but no one really knows because it's just hearsay. It's just the cheese may. No one really knows, right? But there was this piece here. Let me show it. You probably want to see what I'm looking at, right? So uh, Binance attempt to buy Voyager digital assets complicated by national security. And that's interesting. A Binance spokesperson said xenophobia is underlying the talk of a possible review by a key U.S. government panel that examines foreign takeovers. So what this means is that, you know who's in the running? This is good for me. Voyager. I mean, Voyager. Binance, excuse me. Binance is in the running. And it looks like uh, they may be one of the leading bidders. If not, uh, they wouldn't have to go through this government panel as far as foreign takeovers. Because I think Binance is, I want to say it's located in Singapore or maybe it's the Virgin Islands. I always get those too confused. Correct me in the comments. But um, yeah, that's uh, one of the new updates. I got to tell you, I got more faith in Voyager getting bought out than uh, Celsius. Just saying. So yeah. CBDC equals Zuck bucks, Meta bucks. Uh, yeah, that's a good one, Darth Mike. But Darth Mike says it perfectly. He says you put money in the banks and they do fractionalized reserve lending and they gamble with your money, but you do not get any of the gains, so you might as well gamble a bit yourself. But you're, that's just it, Darth Mike. As, as far as the government's concerned, you're too dumb to understand that, right? Uh, I must admit, some people are pretty dumb. Talk to my brother. All right. Uh, let me show. Thank you. <laughs> One month. Very hard to talk about, talk about this boring news of crypto. You know, it's actually quite, again, and I said this before, there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes of growth. And I'm going to talk more about the products that are growing and building and doing the good things. And the ones that are just disappearing. Just pay attention to the ones in the, in the bear market. The ones in the bear market that built in this one are going to be set and primed for 2024, 25, and 26. And that's just how it goes. Um, I'm going to have a couple on soon, actually. Yeah, push the like button. Uh, what? Oh, yeah. Late to the party, did Rob go over the absolutely, I don't know what that, that word is, on Twitter spaces the other day with old Alex. So apparently, Alex Mashinsky was in a Twitter spaces and it was Simon Dixon. So, and it was interesting. And it was very cordial and very nice. I'm just kidding. It was not that. Uh, you got to, if you go to Simon Dixon's, Simon Dixon, S-I-M-O-N-D-I-X-O-N, Bank to the Future, just type in Simon Dixon YouTube. You'll find it. It's his recent video. And Alex was talking, which I don't know if that was the right decision because of the legal implications, but he sure was there. And he was pretty ticked off. And Simon also got ticked off. And they, there was a lot of accusations going back and forth. I don't know who's uh, lying, who's telling the truth. I have no idea, but that's not for me to decide. My, uh, my job is just to report them about what's going on and what I think is the best option for everybody. If, uh, if you gave me a vote right now, I would give a vote of no confidence to Celsius management. That's just what it is. I don't really like them in there. I don't know who their uh, risk assessment person group was, but didn't do too hot. And there's a reason why certain companies are thriving 
and certain companies are going under and certain companies are insolvent and certain, con uh, certain businesses are not countries, certain businesses. So, uh, yeah. And then some people will say, well, you know, Simon Dixon, you know, he's got his own agenda. Of course he does. He's got a, he's a big investor in the cells. He doesn't want to see all that money go away. So I don't care who wins as long as it makes everybody whole. I'm, I'm all about that. Uh, hey, Dan, can you steal the, can I, can you steal the argument for CBDCs? I always hear about the negatives, but no one talks about the benefits. Sure. Tell you about the benefits. So first of all, like there was one segment in there which which talked about uh, governmental relief as far as like getting the, the money into the hands of people. Here's the thing. Do you, have one of, do you have one of these, these smartphones? Everybody does. Even in like third world countries. Go, I mean, there's, there's different data points where even third world countries have smartphones. Maybe not the latest iPhone, but they do have a lot of smartphones. And there's telecommunications uh, built up around and uh, they're spreading out even uh, day to day. That's why I like World Mobile Token. One of the things that they did, they did talk about, which is interesting, was the ability to get money into the hands of people that need it for disaster relief. And I was like, I could see that. And I also think about this. Remember when we had the, uh, uh, what the, was that called? The coronavirus. I don't know if you remember that. Pretty big thing. And everybody was getting uh, these STEMI checks and things like that. And there was, you could, you could get them to so many people, but guess what? Even in America, we've got a, a decent percentage of people who are unbanked. So they had to get it mailed. People lost the mail. They couldn't get that check. They couldn't deposit it or they couldn't, you know, cash it. And they were, they were aced out. So on one side, for the CBDCs, I can see that uh, could work out if we can do everything here. The thing I question, though, is who's going to run that operation? Who's going to be tech support? Who's going to get that app to, to work seamlessly for an entire nation? I don't know who's going to get that, uh, that contract. So, yeah, maybe. The thing is, it'll and also make things easier. How many times have you tried to, I don't know if you tried to, to send money on the weekend through your bank. Uh, it doesn't work. Wires don't work, things like that. You can do it through PayPal. You can do it through Venmo, actually, and Zelle. So I guess it's not a big deal. But um, I just, as people explain to me, there's some downside, social credit risk and all that stuff. And sure, we'll see. Ah, national security. <laughs> uh, yeah. So... Luxo Cat says a good point. Rob, not sure how old you are. I am 73. Now I'm, I'm rapidly approaching the big 5-0. Uh, but how many years of life, uh, of your life as government doomsday predictions been happening every single year? Uh, do you feel like you're in a dystopian world as predicted? You know, it's a funny thing. You take a look at the news and you see how awful everything is around. And then you, you, you feel like it's really awful. Here's a prime example. Like when I went to New York, never been to New York. I thought for sure it was just going to be ram. It was like Grand Theft Auto all over the place. It's going to be, you know, just crime and whatever, just, uh, and, and just decay. Beautiful city. Great. People are awesome. I think the more that we take a look at the news and kind of get ingrained to that, the more that there's sensationalism and people want us to believe that everything is just the worst thing of all time. But if we just poke our heads out and take a look around, there's some good things going on. There's a lot of good things that are happening in the world. You just got to get out there. So when I think about like, is there a dystopian world is predicted? Is, is everything collapsing? And if you really want to go down that rabbit hole, I mean, you can find tons of different problems out there. I'm not saying there's not. I'm just saying I don't think it's as bad as people believe it to be. That's all. Never ending prophecy. You know, my favorite prophecy was uh, the dollar is going to collapse. That's my favorite. And everybody talks about it like it's going to happen tomorrow. I'm like, I don't know if it's going to. Mike Maloney, great. I got to meet him at some point. He lives in Puerto Rico. He's got a great YouTube, uh, everything about gold, very smart gentleman. And, uh, you know, he talks about <laughs> gold and, and how things are, but he actually came over to the whole crypto side as well. But, um, you know, he talks about how fiat money throughout in the entire human civilization, all fiat money has collapsed. And you, you can take a look at his data points. They're all right there for you. And that's true. The dollar will collapse. What's going to happen next month? I don't think so. Five years, maybe. 50 years, possibly. A thousand years, eh, probably. But nobody really knows. And I think it's, it's, it's that assumption that's going to happen very soon. So you got to get out and, and all that stuff. I'm old enough to remember uh, the 2000 
crisis when it, we thought the world was going to explode and there was preppers and everything else and yeah, it seemed to be a little okay. Yeah, and I mean, was anyone on the stream in Puerto Rico? I'd like to know what's going on with the electricity usage and the uh, the hurricane barreling down. I think it's supposed to make landfall. Well, there's already st storms and everything else going there. I want to see how the how people are faring. Ah, thanks. Yeah, that's right. Fiona, Hurricane Fiona. That's we don't know that agent using CBC to buy crypto will be banned. Who knows? Remember, Bitcoin was supposed to be banned every month since 2010. So I don't know. Yeah. yeah if infinity curious, infinitely curious. If Ripple was in talks of buying Voyager, you'd never know. It's all a show. I don't know. <laughs> Boomers be like, just put your money in savings account. I'm telling you, that was the advice I got from my mom. Uh, Jack, how's everyone's Sunday going? Mine's going great. So I'm here with you guys. It's a great question. Pie Hunter. <laughs> it's a good name. Rob, do you think sentiment does more for coins than metrics or vice versa? Me and, you know, me and Ben and James were talking about this in one of the shows and, and it's a funny thing, like sentiment, sentiment analysis, it can move mountains, right? And stories can move big time i don't care how great your ta is ta works to a point but if uh elon musk comes out tomorrow and says hey we're gonna start accepting bitcoin again guess what happens to bitcoin it goes up and as far as like a sentiment analysis it seems like the good news is avoided in the bear market and uh the bad news is avoided in the bull market so it just depends on where it is in that cycle and I always take a look at this. If I'm gonna look at anything to buy, I take a look at the fundamentals. What does this, how big, and for me, it's always about the cut. How big is the community for this project? What is the utility? What does it do? Does it do something? Is it a me too product? Is it actually gonna have usage in the, in the future? How big is the team and what have they done before to move us to the right direction? Of course, lastly, I look at the tokenomics. Uh, is this going to have a cliff? Or are we gonna get dumped on? Is it just like a trillions of, of coins or whatever else? I call it the C-U-T-T, -T, the community, utility, the team, and the tokenomics. And then that takes care of the fundamentals. Uh, the technicals, I like to use the graphs from looking at Bitcoin. Very easy to use. Links in the description and just kind of go from there. I'm doing the video where we're going to talk about cycle tops and things like that. And then, of course, sentiment, the fear and greed index. I mean, you can kind of, it's kind of palpable, but uh, you can see, see some things. And there's also sentiment uh, indicators around. Check out those sites. So if you use all them together, you kind of get a good view. The problem is getting an, uh, paralysis by analysis. That's the bigger issue, I think. Uh, <laughs> I got, me too. <laughs> I wonder, it's funny. I wonder if Alex's lawyers physically came over to his apartment and stopped him from streaming. It was pretty funny because like he, he abruptly, uh, I guess he stopped. And uh, someone was like, and I'm sure people were like, ah, Simon, you know, ditched him off off the off the program, but Simon's like, no, he's got to go. It's a good good idea to, for him to do that. But who knows? Maybe he did. I don't know. Uh, yeah, where is Jarky? Beardy doesn't need any more. He's a he's a Dogecoin, or he's a, he's an EOS millionaire. I don't see why he would need anything else. Ah, uh, let's see. Oh, this is a good question. Sam says, in the U.S., can you seriously not send bank payments to weekends? No. If you're going to do a wire, tra wire transfer, it's not happening. <laughs> it's not happening on Friday or Saturdays. But uh, for Zelle, like I have USAA, so I can use Zelle. It's attached to USAA. I can send payments, and uh, I think it tentatively goes there and actually works. PayPal, I can use all the time, 24-7. And of course, if you want to say crypto, 24-7, 365, no problems. And right now, it's pretty fast because no one's here. <laughs> No one's, nobody's here is in crypto except the savvy people like yourself who know where things are going. All the tourists are gone. Most. Ah, uh, Do Kwan did a tweet. Well, let's take a peek at that. Do. Huh. Oh, well, this ought to be good. Let's take a peek at this. You probably want to see this. 
This was September 17th. What's the date today? Yeah, this is yesterday. To be honest, I haven't gone running in a while. I need to cut some calories. I am not on the run or anything similar for any government agency that has shown interest to communicate. We are in full cooperation and we don't have anything to hide. We're in the process of defending ourselves in multiple jurisdictions. We have held ourselves to an extremely high bar of integrity and look forward to clarifying the truth over the next few months. Cheers. All right. Well, we'll see. Oh, I bet James is, we're always overlapping that guy. Uh, let's see. Hey, Robbie, is your family in crypto as well? No, they think I'm ridiculous. Almost all of them, except my wife. She believes in me. That's why I married her. Well, my two brothers are like, you're dumb. Uh, my one brother, he made a big on Visa. He got into Visa a long time ago. Visa, the payment processor, credit cards, debit cards, all that stuff. He's doing quite well. So he's like, I don't get, I don't get crypto. I don't even try to explain it to him. My other brother's on, into um, uh, precious metals, silver mostly which I'm like, nothing wrong with that. I own that as well. And for the other, my first brother, Eric, he's, he's more into stocks. Oh, that's fine. It takes everybody. Hmm. Yeah, okay, says all civilizations collapse, right? Mr. Noisy. Hey, Rob, thanks for interesting me to World Mobile Token. Yes, great project. Got to get uh, Mickey back on the show. Give us some updates. And they're working with some good uh, companies. Mm. so uh, rob i think you're missing the point on cbdc's if they prevent you from using cbdc to buy crypto how will you switch if you know about when to switch to cbdc first of all let's let's get something straight it's not like think of the people in your lives who are tech savvy and think of the ones that aren't tech savvy and we have this discussion all the time with my friend brian in puerto rico he believes CBDCs are coming like in a month and everybody's going to be switched over and cash will be banned and there will be roving police forces all days and nights and they will put a gun in your face and tell you to eat cricket protein or something like that. I'm like, I don't think it's going to work that aggressively. So if we go for, for CBDCs, first of all, try to get rid of cash. And now people will say, well, they got rid of gold. Remember back in the, God, what was it? 1920s, 1917, 1920, 20, somewhere in there where they said, uh, hey, turn in all your gold to us or it's going to be illegal. Guess what? People still held on to gold. They still traded it under the table and became black market. But most of them did, did trade it in. So if you can say like, oh, we're going to get rid of cash altogether. It's only going to be CBDCs. Good luck with that. My, my mom and a bunch of non-tech savvy people who can't really work things. Oh, let's give them a phone. Those worked out. I just don't think it's going to work like that in a year, two years, five years. I could be wrong. And I, I know right now, every, some people are screaming at They're like, you're wrong, you're wrong. I just don't see it that way. I don't think they're going to be able to do that perfectly. Hmm. Uh, Beardy, how, uh, Rob, do I, do I have to show up for McDonald's shift tonight? Or are we mooning? So I thought you said, do you have to show up to, to McDonald's? I work at Walmart. Uh, fundamentals. Hey, speaking of which, how bad are we dumping? Let me know. Yeah, there we go. Sass is my dad is 70 buying Bitcoin. So what I just mentioned, like just because you're a little bit older doesn't mean you can't be tech savvy. I'm just saying some people just don't want to be tech savvy. They have the mentality. They're just like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> James, James is on love. You got to go. Well, that's probably why. Ah, man, there's a total blackout in Puerto Rico. Golly. I was talking to Big E. He said the same thing. They're going to shut down all electricity to avoid uh, catastrophes. Brandon says, I want the news. Uh, Congress is corrupt. And um, there's going to be a thing called Fed now. There you go. Told you. Hey, Rob, do you worry about uh, no coiner CBDC adoption? I don't know. Let's be honest. Uh, what's the difference between using a, a CBDC and using Zelle and using PayPal or using any kind of like uh, instant payment process for CBDCs? What do you get, right? I don't, 
So I don't see the advantage. It's all backed by the same people, government, right? Can't they keep printing? Can they keep doing inflation? Do people still believe? That, that, that's why we talk about inflation here all the time. So like I take a look at CBDCs. I mean, maybe some, there's some better things as far as faster transaction time. But I wonder, since it's the government, is it really going to be that much better? Do we really need it that bad for a CBDC to come out? Maybe for cross-border payments. Sure, I can see that. But that's not the whole market. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, some credit unions are open on Saturdays, but sometimes you can't transfer the money between, like, let's say, like El Paso Federal Credit Union and Wells Fargo. They say it'll it'll go. We'll start it, but it'll be on a Monday. Ugh. And Protechos, one of the um, charities I donate to. It's ready to help when this clears. They uh, put on uh, roofing, roofing for damaged houses there in Puerto Rico. Still over 3,000 roofs have blue tarps. PayPal thinks a wallet deposit. Yeah, maybe so. Well, there's two options, you know, with PayPal. You can do instant, but it's 1%. Or you can wait the two to three business days, and then it's free. So it's an option. Uh, people still, people have the memories of a goldfish. That's just how it is. Pie Hunter says, my wife thinks crypto is dumb, even though I had a nice profit last year. Should I leave her? Absolutely not. She's the one that's going to keep you sane when, when you get too greedy and you think that's going to go to the moon, like it happened in 2021 and 2017. She's probably the one that's going to ground you enough to go, you better sell some and take some profits. That's why wives are great. Because if not, all men would be dead. Let's see. Only peace solves war. <laughs> Cricket protein. Next big thing. <laughs> Forge and was a quick study. Good one. Yeah, I know people don't like cash, but I still say like, cash is great. And if you want to hide transactions, not that I do or I've ever done it, but I'm just saying it's a way easier to hide transactions than cash than crypto. I have no thoughts on QNT, so don't ask me. Oh, that was Chloe. What's your opinion on XRP? I think it's great. I think it's a great company. Hope they win the SEC uh, case. There's no reason why, they, why Ripple and them should go round and round. Uh, that was Chloe. Michael Swain. Why do you think Nasdaq will go under 10,000? If they crypto down with it, we're correlated. So everything should go down. I mean, I'm just saying, if Nasdaq goes down or S&P goes down, we're pretty heavily correlated so far, especially Nasdaq. So yeah. Yeah, interesting. Those payments don't settle instantly at all. A little bit some of the air. CBDC is nothing for cross-border. All right. Maybe that's the whole point of the Fed now then. I'm low-key trying to get some polka dot talk. I still own polka dot. Gold back stable coins, sure. There was there used to be one. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And Jay says there's about 35 billion in cash sitting on the sidelines waiting to invest in crypto. I think there's trillions on the sidelines waiting to invest in crypto. It's just like I said, if you were JP Morgan Chase or BlackRock or Fidelity or any of these big, these big businesses, big banks that are out there, funds, institutions, why would you buy crypto right now, right? It's pretty risky. Like, wouldn't you, if you want to take that risk, wouldn't you want to go down as far as you possibly could and go from there? It just all depends on if you think that the economy is going to get worse and we're going to start tanking in the markets. I personally believe that. So if I was an institution, I would like, just wait. Just like we did with the, just like we did with the housing market. We'll just wait. And that's it, everybody. So look, about 45 minutes. I think that uh, concludes all the questions. And that's all I got for today. So look, I think James is doing a, a live stream right now. Go ahead over there to Invest Answers. And that's all for today. So if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up and a like. I would appreciate that. That's fantastic. And that is it for today. So thanks so much for stopping by on a Sunday. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.
Adiós.